Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and today we'll be talking actually about the Nintendo Switch because the Switch continues to set records and I want to be clear here, these are the kind of records that are set that make me not really worry about how Switch is going to do this holiday, let alone how it's going to do up against the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series Sex, I mean X. <laughs> um, I'm not really that worried about how it's going to perform over the upcoming year. And now this does bring you the question, what the hell do we need a Switch Pro for? And we'll talk about that in this video as well. But let's get right into the numbers because this is absolutely insane. And all of this data comes directly from the MPD. And for one of the first times in years, we have exact sales data on the Nintendo Switch from the MPD group. This does not happen. The MPD group has stopped giving exact sales data for a long time. But uh, that's different now, and it's different because of what the Nintendo Switch has done. In October, let me throw this out there. A month where the only new game really that mattered for Nintendo was Pikmin 3 Deluxe, a Wii U port of a not very popular franchise that reportedly hasn't even sold that well. The MPD doesn't even have it as like a top software title. Guess what? The Nintendo Switch sold 735,926 units. Like I said, exact data. 735,926 units just in the United States. That is what the MPD tracked. Holy crap. That's not even a holiday period. These are the kind of numbers you hear for a November, for a December, not a random October. And yeah, it's the second best selling October of all time. You know who number one is for October? The best selling October ever tracked in the history of the MPD, which dates back like 25 plus years. Well, that would be the Wii. <laughs> That's right. The Nintendo Wii sold 807,000 during its peak in an October back in the early 2000s or really mid 2000s. So that is crazy. Um, to think that the Switch is pulling that kind of numbers at a time when it's not even releasing big games. The Switch has Animal Crossing New Horizons this year. And that's pretty much it. We could talk about Paper Mario, obviously, but really the big game for this year was that. Now, there was something else that came out. There was some DLC for the Pokemon stuff. But again, this it, it, it's crazy to me to think that Switch is pulling these kind of numbers. You know, we had the Xbox Series X that just came out. We had the PlayStation 5 that just came out. And here we are the very next day talking about Nintendo. Now, I realize that some of you guys might feel like, man, Nate, you might have a little bias on those next-gen systems. Like, here you are saying, oh, Nintendo doesn't have to worry about anything. And, oh, you know, who cares about those other platforms? Well, I care. I care about the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. And I know I've done way more coverage of Microsoft this week than Sony. And honestly, I don't know who to really blame. There's kind of blame to go all around for that. Uh, chiefly that I couldn't get a pre-order in for the PlayStation 5. And then I got so frustrated that I decided to spend my budget for PlayStation 5 on other stuff for my children, which I guess, should I really regret spending money on my kids? Probably not. But the point is that because of that, I don't have a PlayStation 5 right now. I plan to get one in the future and we'll be doing lots of coverage when it finally gets here and I can finally do my, hey, has my mind changed on the Xbox Series X now that I have a PlayStation 5? But what isn't going to change is my stance on Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is still my favorite platform, even as right now this week, I'm playing more of that Series X, that black, black box back there. I'm playing more of the Series X right now than I am Switch this week, but it's launch week. I already know the moment Age of Calamity lands next week, I am right back to playing a lot, a lot more Switch than anything else. This channel is called Nintendo Prime for a reason. I have a bias for Nintendo. I am not afraid to admit it. I am not ashamed to admit it. I grew up a Nintendo fan. I ran a Zelda website for God, 20 years. It's crazy to me to imagine Nintendo not being my number one platform. And so for now, the Switch still is number one. And it's clearly number one in consumers' hearts as well. Now, I don't know who's going to win the MPD for the month of November because Switch is right now won the MPD sales report for 23 straight months, which is an all-time record as well. In fact, Nintendo set that record a couple of months ago, and they just keep piling on top. Now, for November, 
I don't know. Because we know the Xbox Series X has had, or the Xbox Series X slash S, I should say, according to Phil Spencer, he put out there that it is the best launch in Xbox history in terms of sales. And they're not going to give us sales numbers. Xbox and Phil Spencer said, hey, we're never giving you sales numbers for systems again. But if you go back and look at launch sales of prior Xbox platforms, you can kind of extrapolate, hey, the Xbox Series X slash S at least sold more than that. And it's Microsoft's most expensive system at launch, sort of because the Xbox One had Kinect bundled in, minus Kinect, but whatever. Anyways, the point is that the Xbox Series X is sold incredibly well. We know the PlayStation 5 is sold incredibly well. In fact, I'm willing to bet both platforms sold a million, if not multiple millions in the month of November when it's all said and done. We still have the Black Friday sales season coming up, you know, with the US specifically. Uh, so yeah, I honestly think, you know, we're going to see launch numbers that are in the couple millions here in the first month. Now that is amazing in that of itself, but how can Nintendo stack up? Well, they just had an October where they almost did a million without even trying. That's, that's the crazy thing. Nintendo isn't even trying and they're getting these numbers. This is why Nintendo doesn't need to worry about what's happening with the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5 because Nintendo is just killing it without having to do much. Now, yeah, they did some Mario 35th anniversary stuff. At the beginning of October, we had, we had uh, Mario 35 on that Nintendo Switch online service. But did anyone really think that's what's pushing units? I think it's just people being stuck at home wanting a platform that has evergreen titles out the arse. See, right now, it's cool that we can go on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, play some backward compatible games on PlayStation 5, specifically play a few new gen games, you know, Sackboy, Astrobot, uh, Demon Souls, all that jazz. That's great. That sounds good. But does that really compare to the Mario Karts of the world, the Breath of the Wilds of the world, uh, the Super Mario Odysseys of the world, the Splatoons of the world, the Animal Crossings of the world, the Fire Emblem Three Houses of the world, the Luigi's Mansion 3s of the world? I mean, for many of you guys, absolutely. If you are a fan of Sony platforms, a fan of Xbox platforms, you can easily argue, you know, Game Pass, hey, you know, that these systems have way more to offer you as a gamer than the Switch does. And I understand that. This is not about console wars. We all have our personal preferences. Just because mine's Nintendo doesn't mean yours can't be something else. And I can't be okay with that. If you love your PlayStation 5 way more than you ever loved the Switch, awesome. If you love the Xbox Series X or S way more than you ever loved Switch this generation, that's okay. Just because I'm not there with you yet doesn't mean that I won't be there with you at some point in the future. I can't love a platform at launch more than one that's been out for four years and has a big established library of games, especially exclusive games. Now, Nintendo has obviously Age of Calamity coming. Nintendo has Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury and a new Monster Hunter game coming next year exclusive to the platform. And now we think anyways that Nintendo will be launching a Switch Pro next year and maybe even early next year. And some people have thought they need to do this to compete with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Actually, I think Nintendo is just going to do it, not because of those platforms, but because Nintendo sees emerging technologies and Nintendo has a history of releasing mid gen upgrades. This isn't new. Hey, remember the DSi? Remember the new Nintendo 3DS? Heck, let's go way back in time. Remember the Game Boy Color? That was technically not a new generation, guys. That was just a Game Boy in color. That was a mid-gen upgrade. And it was a huge upgrade at the time for the Game Boy. So the thing is, Nintendo has a history with handheld-specific systems. Now, I know Nintendo calls the Switch a home console. But Nintendo is well aware, they have the data themselves, that a lot of gamers play it portably or play it both. In fact, more gamers play it exclusively portable than exclusively docked. And obviously, if you throw in docked, you know, the, the people who docked and portable actually use the Switch as, you know, the all the tools that it offers at your disposal for TV play and on-the-go play. And you combine that with people who just play it on-the-go. It's a really big audience that plays it mobile. We also know it is using a, you know, it's basically using phone tech. And we have seen phones now that output 4K. We have seen phones now that play Genshin Impact at settings that we have not seen possible with games on Switch. So mobile technology has come a long way. And they're partnering with NVIDIA, which is at the top of the stack for now, AMD is actually playing some pretty good catch up with Big Navi, but it's at the top of the stack for GPU performance. And now they own ARM, which is one of the top tier mobile processors out there in a lot of the top tier, well, Android phones. In fact, 
It's actually in all iPhones as well. They're one of the manufacturers of the iPhone CPUs. So the bottom line is that Nintendo is sitting pretty and they're going to release the Switch Pro not because they need a boost in sales. They didn't need a boost in sales when they released the new 3DS. The 3DS was starting to pick up sales momentum and starting to do really, really well. And then they released the new 3DS and then it did even better. And that's what Nintendo's hoping to capture. It's not that Nintendo is not going to be happy with the 24 million projected uh, Nintendo Switches they're going to sell through the fiscal year of March of 2021. Of course, Nintendo's happy with that. They want to keep it selling after March of 2021 and keep the momentum and sell another 20 plus million. One way to do that is to reinvigorate the market, excite the market after the holidays by saying, hey, I'm glad you bought Switch. I'm glad you're enjoying all these games, but guess what? 2021 is here and we have a new Switch for you. A new Switch with a better screen, with better visuals, with better frame rates. That you know what? Maybe we used to not care about this kind of stuff, but you know what? We realize a lot of you have better TVs now than you did five years ago, than you did a decade ago. So we want to give you a platform that performs better on your TV. And we want to give you a platform that can take our games like Breath of the Wild, and actually make it run at a stable 30 FPS, if not 60 FPS. We value that. And we value it to a point that we want to upgrade and offer you something. What was the point of the new Nintendo 3DS? Ask yourselves, what was the real point of the new Nintendo 3DS? What did it offer you? You didn't get a better screen, so you didn't get better resolution. But what did you get? You got more visually intensive games. They ported Xenoblade Chronicles, a Wii game, to it. Think about that. A Wii game on 3DS. Insane, right? We also got higher frame rates on games when we got a Wii U port on 3DS, by the way, in Hyrule Warriors Legends, and it had better frame rates on the new 3DS. Yes, frame rates matter. Nintendo knows frame rates matter. Why would they have released all those updates to Breath of the Wild over the year that improved frame rate if they didn't realize that frame rate is important? Nintendo knows frame rate directly affects gameplay and they're going to care way more about frame rate than they are anything else. This is why we saw things like Yoshi's Crafted World be at 60 FPS, even though it would dip below HD resolutions because they valued the gameplay more than the visual presentation. So again, this is the primary reason to get an upgraded Nintendo Switch. Plus it's harder to hack, obviously. Uh, there's new technologies. Nintendo has an ongoing partnership with NVIDIA that's trying to push new tech. And Nintendo is their avenue into the console gaming space and obviously a, a use case for their mobile gaming chips. So yeah, I think a lot of things are adding up that Nintendo's good. I don't know if we're getting 4K. You know, we're not going to get 120 FPS. I can tell you that. But I don't know if we're getting 4K. I don't know if we're getting DLSS 2.0. I have no idea. But what I do know is Nintendo doesn't care about the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Even though, kudos to Doug Bowser, president of Nintendo of America, he has shouted out both platforms on a launch day and congratulated them for their launches. And Xbox, I think, also congratulated Sony. I think there was a Sony exec that congratulated, uh, you know, Xbox as well, although I don't like the overall PlayStation Twitter did, but, you know, there's some politicking involved in some of that sometimes. But what I will say is, Nintendo Switch is probably going to launch the Switch Pro next year just because it falls in line with the typical time period in which Nintendo would release an upgraded system. And I'm pretty excited about that. I'm also really excited about that Xbox Series X back there. I'm also really excited about a PlayStation 5 when I finally get one on hands. I'm looking forward to this current generation of Nintendo, you know, of PlayStation and of Xbox because I'm an everything gamer. Guys, right here in front of me, kind of down this way, I have a gaming PC. I love gaming on PC. In fact, I have the, the new World of Warcraft uh, expansion pack uh, that's coming out. Hey, I have it already per pre-purchased and everything. I'm going to be playing that. I'm also going to be playing some Crusader, King Crusader Kings 3 on my PC because I like PC gaming. Heck, when Age of Empires, the new one, finally comes out for Microsoft, I'll be playing that on my PC. <laughs> uh, hopefully with Game Pass. Should be included with Game Pass. So that's kind of cool there. And you know what? I'm going to also be playing the exclusives for PlayStation. I can't wait to play Horizon Forbidden West next year. I can't wait to play Medium on the Xbox Series X. I have games I'm looking forward to on all platforms. I mean, Breath of the Wild 2, I think, is coming next year. So there are things that I'm looking forward to playing on all platforms because I am a gamer first and foremost. As biased as I am for Nintendo, really, I just want a game, baby. And you know what? I think I might finally be entering the greatest overall generation of my lifetime. And that's saying something because I was back 
with the SNES and the Genesis, right? I was there with the N64 and the PlayStation 1. I was there. I was there when the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox was on the market. Oh, and don't forget the Dreamcast that existed for a little brief moment there. I was there through all these generations, dating all the way back to the NES. Sorry, don't have a lot of experience with the Atari stuff beforehand and some of the other things. that There was more than just Atari before that. But here's the thing. I've been there for a majority of all these gaming generations, and it's this one in my mid-30s that I am most excited about. So, yeah, baby. Three consoles that matter to me. Gaming P- gaming on PC is better than it's ever been. Um, gaming on phones. <laughs> Has gaming on phones is better than it's ever been. I know some of you guys hate the microtransactions, but, dude, there's some legitimate... I mean, Genshin Impact is fully playable on phones. Uh, Fortnite used to be. I won't talk about that one. But anyways, I am Nathaniel Rubble Jance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this current generation, which includes Switch, includes Xbox Series X, and now includes PlayStation 5. That is the current generation of gaming. Let me know what you think. Does Nintendo need to be worried? Are you worried? Or are you just happy to be a gamer? Because I think right now, it's never been better to be a gamer than today. All right, folks. I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.